Um, good afternoon. Thank you for coming to my talk. Uh, I'm Roxy from Stanford. Uh, my topic today is um, deep and cross network for ad click predictions. This work was done while I was doing internship in Google last summer, and this is also joint work with Bin, Gang, and Mingliang. Um, I will start with an introduction to the problem we are going to solve and some existing work. And then I will introduce our deep and cross network, followed by some experimental results. In the end, I will show some cross network analysis. Let's start with the introduction. Um, assume you are given data pairs X and Y, where X is your data. For example, user logs, it could be sparse or dense. And Y is your label. For example, one if the user has clicked an ad and zero otherwise. And your goal is to predict the ad click-through rate accurately. This is essentially a generic classification problem. And the key behind the success of such classification algorithm is to identify those um, predictive feature crossings and at the same time explore those rare or unseen feature pairs. So what kind of features are predictive? I will give you a toy example. Say you are going to sell a blender to customers by providing their ad to click. And uh, if the customer has recently bought some bananas and then there is a positive effect on whether he or she gonna click on the ad or not. And same goes for if um, they have recently read book on how to eat healthy. However, if these two things happen at the same time, and then there is a higher likelihood to for the customer to click on your ad, and this kind of feature is predictive and often referred as cross features, which has been shown to be significant in improving your model's expressive power. Um, so one question is, are these predictive features easy to identify? Probably not for web skill application. Why? Because uh, the data from that application, the feature space is always large and sparse, which would lead to uh, exhaustive searching of those effective features. And there's always a need of manual feature engineering. So there have been some work trying to overcome these challenges, and I will briefly introduce them here. I will discuss three models. The first is factorization machine. It was proposed to tackle those second order feature interactions for sparse input. However, this kind of low order interaction might limit your model's expressive power. Um, by contrast, our model, the DCN, is able to tackle higher order interactions. So a side note here is uh, we're recently aware of a model called DeepFM, um, which was um, proposed to combine the FM and Deep Network together. However, it's a fairly new model, so we're currently making the comparisons. Um, deep crossing is a residue network based model. It stacks all types of inputs together and fed it to multiple residue units. So deep crossing and other deep network based model, they can learn very complex feature interactions. And there has been theoretical work showing that for a neural network, it is able to well approximate any smooth functions if you are given sufficiently many hidden units or hidden layers. Um, yet one question is, are these kind of models the most efficient representation for function of practical interest? Um, one thing to note is that the crossings in deep crossing are implicit, which means they are achieved by linear transformation and activation function like ReLU or sigmoid. Um, if you're a big fan of Kaggle computation, you might have realized a lot of those manually crafted feature in the winning solution are not very complex. Instead, they are of low order, explicit, and effective. From this aspect, uh, our model is able to, the crossings are explicit of bounded degree and are in the format of monomials, for example, x1 times x2. And wide and deep model was also proposed in the spread of learning those bounded degree feature interactions more efficiently. So what they do is they um, add a linear component that takes cross feature as input 
and joint strain with a deep component. However, there is no efficient method to select those um, predictive cross features for the linear component. While our model is able to automatically learn those bounded degree explicit features. So far, I have talked about some existing work and we are in a position to introduce our deep and cross network and uh, we'll call it DCN for short. So uh, what you see here is an architecture of the DCN and I will lead you briefly through the model. So it starts with an indenting a second layer on the bottom and the output X0 is then fed in parallel to a cross network and a deep network. And then the output from these two networks are then combined to generate your desired prediction. We joined trained all these components. By doing this, each component is able to learn from each other during the optimization. And therefore, the entire model enjoys the advantage from each component. So DCN is able to handle a large set of sparse features. It can learn very complex feature interactions, generalize well, and at the same time, it can automatically learn those explicit bounded degree feature interactions. So one thing to note here is that the entire model, from the start to the end, there is no need of manual feature engineering. Let's take a closer look at each component. Let's start with the embedding a second layer. When considering the web skill application, the inputs are mostly categorical features and one common practice is to encode them into one hot vectors. However, this always leads to excessively high dimensional space and our model takes the output from embedding as the input to avoid manual feature engineering. So this should be different from the wide and deep model where the linear model takes the um, goal sparse features as input. And uh, specifically, we apply the technique called low dimensional embedding that projects your sparse input from high dimension Xi to a low dimensional dense vector X embedded. And all these embedded vectors are gonna be stacked together here along with the uh, normalized dense input and the feature network. This is how we generate the input to our network. Let's move on to the cross network. Um, so the picture you see on the top is one layer in the cross network where X is the input, Y is the output, B is a bias term, and W is the weight vector. So in the feature crossing part in the middle, the input X is interacted with original input X0 to generate high order terms. Specifically, it generates all the D square cross pairs as shown in the matrix in the bottom. And all these crosses are then immediately projected to a D dimensional space. And the optimization procedure are gonna select those informative crossings. So in practice, we multiply X and W first for efficiency. The cross network also shares the spirit of a residual network where the input X is added back to the output. I will give you a more detailed analysis of the cross network later. Before that, I will show you some experimental results. Oops. Um, let's first look at the um, Creative Display Add data, which is a CTR data set. This data set contains both the integer features and categorical features. And uh, the um, cardinality for each category is large. So for this data set and other CDR data set, a small improvement in the log loss is considered as practically significant. Why? Because by considering a large user base, a small improvement in the model's accuracy could potentially lead to a large increase in the company's revenue. And we compare DCN with other models mentioned and report their best test log loss. For log loss, the lower is better. So DCN is our model, DC is deep crossing, DNN is deep neural network, FM is factorization machine-based model, 
and LR is the uh, widely used logistic regression. And we can see from the table that DCN achieves the best log loss, and it achieves such log loss with 60% less memory than that used in DNN. Considering the fact the only difference between DCN and DNN is that there is an actual cross network, which only involves all of the actual parameters. So this gain is pretty significant. And because of this, we're more interested in making a detailed comparison between DCN and DNN. So let's compare these two models by varying the um, log dot threshold and the memory budgets. The first table shows the um, number of parameters needed to achieve a desired log loss. So for a given log loss threshold, each column, you can see that the DCN requires almost an order magnitude less memory than that used in DNN. The second table shows the best log loss achieved with very memory budgets. Note that in the small non-parameter region, which is on the left side, there is a clear improvement of DCN over DNN. In such parameter region, the parameters in the cross network is comparable to that in the diff network, which suggests this cross network is more efficient in capturing those predictive features. While in the uh, large parameter region on the right of the table, the DNN start to close some of the gap, which is expected because more parameters would add to your model's expressiveness power. However, DCN still outperforms. And this consistent outperform suggests that the cross network is able to capture some meaningful interactions that a single DNN is not able to. Let's also look at some non-CDR data set, which is dense data set. So uh, on the left is a forest data type data, we report the accuracy, the higher the better. And on the right is the um, Higgs data, we report the log loss, the lower the better. We see that DCN also performs well on non-CTR data set. And next, I'm going to show you some um, analysis for the cross network, which I have promised. Um, so you can view the cross network from different perspectives and our focus on the perspective of polynomial approximation for today's talk. And let's consider an outlayer cross network. We'll show that our effective hypothesis function live in the space of degree L plus one polynomials. And we only use all of D parameters to characterize them. Let's see details. So Pn on the first line here is a multivariate polynomial class of degree n, which have order of d to the power of n parameters. And we're interested in how the cross network approximate polynomial class of the same order. And uh, we assume the bias term b is zero for simplicity. And we denote the input as x zero, the output as gl. And the cross network explicitly applies feature crossing at each layer, and GL reproduces the polynomial in the following class. Where this is a cross term with a model index alpha, and the degree of such term is the length of alpha. And each polynomial in this class contains all of the cross terms of degree from zero to L plus one, where L is the um, depth of your cross network. Instead of using order of d to the power of L plus one parameters, we only use order of d parameters. Last but more important is, even with only order of d parameters, for different cross terms uh, characterized by different alpha and beta, their coefficients are represented differently. I will skip the um, detailed formula for C alpha here, but on the bar bottom part is um, one example for the formula of C alpha when L equals three. Good. Um, let's recap what we discussed today. So we propose the deep and cross network, DCN, 
that handles a large set of sparse and dense features, thanks to this embedding and stacking layer, and it also learns explicit cross features of bounded degree because of the cross network, jointly with traditional deep representations from the deep network. And experimentally, we show that it delivers state-of-the-art performance on CTR dataset in terms of both model accuracy and memory usage. Thank you. <laughs>